nine years ago I started to type at my computer and then suddenly realised I can make a book out of this and it has taken nine years to assemble all the information and to put it all together. I started work for Manchester Corporation Transport Department in 1962. I was 18 and a quarter at the time. We should have been, I should have been 19 officially, but when I telephoned them, they said, come down to 55 Piccadilly. So I did. I passed all the necessary medical tests and mathematical tests and was taken on as a conductor for Manchester Corporation Transport Department on Wednesday the 8th of August 1962. I did almost five years as a conductor and then in 1967 I became a fully fledged driver and stayed with them and their successors such as Selneck, South East Lancashire, North East Cheshire Passenger Transport Executive, Greater Manchester Transport, Greater Manchester Buses North and finally First Group. I retired having obtained my pension early, earlier than I should have done, and retired fully after working part-time for a number of years in October 2006. Once the corporation had decided to take a person on uh, as a trainee, we were issued with a summer jacket once we had passed all the necessary tests and were taken on permanently, we were issued with a full uniform, which was dark blue woolen cloth, heavy woolen cloth, a jacket, trousers with red piping, a big overcoat also with red piping, a peat cap and three or four separate collars. I was based at Queen's Road Garage Garage was the official term, but since it was the very first tram depot built in 1901, the term depot stuck for many, many years, and both management and crews would refer to it as Queen's Road Depot or even Queen's Road Garage. The terms were interchangeable. Manchester Corporation ran buses for 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day. We ran a night service, so there was never an hour when you couldn't have a ride or travel on a Manchester Corporation bus. We also ran buses to the myriad of factories that were in the Manchester district, including, for instance, Trafford Park. Metrovix was the main employer there, and probably half the fleet went to Metrovix. After the peak hour, many buses did school journeys, taking children to swimming baths and other activities so that the, the buses were in constant use. In the 1960s when I was working as a conductor and driver many people used the buses. Uh, there were fewer cars on the roads but the city centre was always congested but the running times were generous and with a bit of effort and a close eye on the rear view mirrors for the odd police car, it was possible to pull the time back and leave the outer terminus at on time. There was a lot of camaraderie involved because every bus had two men, a conductor and a driver, apart from the odd one or two single deck one man vehicles even in those days. So there was a lot of fun, a lot of camaraderie, people would get to know each other and, and interact socially outside of the job, as well as working together on the buses. I was always interested as a child in buses. I was quite happy going on a long bus ride. I had a great aunt who lived in Old Trafford, so we used to travel on the 81 service from Cheetham to um, Brooks Bar and back. Also, we used to have day trips out into the countryside around Burnley and Clitheroe, so we would use the Ribble buses which ran up and down Berry New Road. I did develop an ear for the sounds that various buses made. I used to travel up and down Leicester Road in Higher Broughton and two buses used to come round the corner. One was the 73 going to Whitefield and the other was the one service which only went another few stops to Manley Park. Inevitably the one would be a PD1 and a Leyland PD1 
and the 73 would be a Daimler. Uh, and I could tell before the buses came round the corner which it was going to be by the different sounds they made. The jacket I'm wearing is Manchester Corporation Transport Department uniform, which was issued to me in probably 1968, not long before Manchester and the surrounding towns were subsumed into Selneck, which was South East Lancashire, North East Cheshire, Passenger Transport Executive. It still fits, and when I drive buses for the Transport Museum now and again, I wear it to the great delight of the passengers. It's a quite a heavyweight wool cloth with red piping. The badge shop here is my PSV Public Service Vehicle Badge, which is my licence to drive buses, now called PCVs, or Passenger Carrying Vehicles. It had to be worn and displayed at all times. This little badge is for safe driving for 15 years. I'm also wearing a pocket watch, which is a Waltham. It was my father's, but many, many drivers had pocket watches. And in fact, just after World War II, the corporation bought batches of watches from the ministry and the drivers could buy them from the corporation and pay five shillings per week. Most of the photographs in the book were taken by myself. I had always been interested in photography and in July 1964 I bought a Kodak 35mm Retina camera I always had the camera with me and took whatever interested me at the time. It was an expensive hobby because a roll of 36 Agfa slides was the cost of a day's pay. Mm -hmm.